Hello, Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review slash recap with my opinion on 90 Day Fiance, Before the 90 Days, Season 6, Episode 11, titled St. Elmo's Fire. What I mean? I don't know, but let's get started. First couple is Amanda and uh, <laughs> Razvan. Okay, so we see them in the Airbnb. They're all cuddled up in bed. Amanda admits to the producer that they had sex. I guess she got off for a period, huh? Mm. The last time we saw them, Rosvin's friend told Amanda that their relationship was toxic. I guess Amanda said, let me show this bitch. My relationship is not toxic. Okay? Rosvin claimed it was amazing. I think he's lying. Nothing can be amazing with that one right there. Uh, Rosvin tells us that he postponed his music video because Amanda didn't want him kissing the lead female. Poor, uh, poor Rosvin. He is doing everything not to piss her off. He really wants to come to the States. So he takes her to Dracula's castle. <laughs> That's the perfect place for her, right? Let her tangle with, with Dracula. She probably scared the shit out of Dracula. But Rasvin is trying his best to have fun with this dud. They're holding hands. They're laughing. They're racing each other. They're taking pictures. <sighs> anyway, they went into a room that was a torture chamber with an interrogation chair. Rasvin told her to sit her ass in the chair and answer his questions. Questions such as, when is she going to tell her kids he's coming to America? Yeah, when is she going to tell her kids he's coming to America? Um, we did find out that um, he got his tourist visa, visa approved. Rosvin also asked her when will she tell her kids that they're more than just friends. Because he says he feels like he's lying to her kids. So Puss told him that she will tell her kids when she feel like they're ready to be told. Rosvin said, when is that? So Puss said, I don't know. <laughs> Rosvin said to her, you never tell me anything. All you say is, I don't know. I will see. Rosvin told her that she may be over, overreacting about how her kids would feel um, if, if they knew about him. Sarpus said, exactly. She thinks they'll act in a negative way. Rosvin said, what if you wait a long time to tell them and they don't want me in their lives? Would you stop your feelings for me? Sarpus said, I don't know. <laughs> Rosvin, go find yourself another American who's more, who's fun, loving, nice, sweet, and kind. And stop um, messing with this woman who's grieving for her husband. Okay? That's what you need to do. You're wasting your time with Sarpus. Next scene, Amanda let us know that her and Rosvin had a fight regarding him getting a job when he comes to the States. But how long is a tourist visa? Are you allowed to work on a tourist visa? I don't know about that. She said she's not going to support him while he's chasing his dreams. But he has his talk, his talk, talk, his TikTok videos that he do. He make money from that, right? Plus his the proceeds from his music video. He'll be making money that way, right? So the producers, they the producer sit down with Rosvin, and Rosvin said she um uh through the fact that she has more, she threw out the fact that she has more money than he does. And then she compared him to her dead husband. She said her husband provides for, provided for her. Then she told him that she doesn't think that they their relationship will work out. And he starts to cry. And he said, it's over. That's the end of Rosvin and Sarpus. Next is Gina and Jasmine. Jasmine and Gino, they're still on their little um, getaway trip. Uh, they take a hike to a waterfall. Then they sit on these rocks and they call Dana, which is... Um, Gino's cousin. Um, uh, Jasmine is pissed off at Dina for asking her um, if she really loves Jasmine on social media. 
So when they get Dina on the phone, or Dana, Dina, Dana, whoever, on the phone, Gino asked him what he meant by the message he sent to Jasmine. And Dina said, well, I don't know her, and I see her on social media getting facials, getting her face, getting facial surgery, and putting extent, expensive extensions in her hair. And he wanted to know if she really had love, um, if she, she felt real love for him. Jasmine told him that um, she only has to prove her love to Gino. Um, Dina said, um, are the arguments that you have with him love? And Jasmine told Dina that Gino is a grown-ass man, and everything he gives her is from the heart. No, Jasmine, it's not from the heart. It's from his bank account, girl. <laughs> That's why he had to come out from being retired and get another job to support you. Dina said, I, um, I didn't mean anything by what I said. You two do whatever the hell y'all want to do. I don't care. He didn't say those words exactly, but that's what he meant. Jasmine think that Dina think that she is an opportunist and a gold gold digger. Well, Jean, um, Jasmine, everybody that watches this show, just about everybody that watches this show, thinks that you're a gold digger and an opportunist because some people are on Jasmine's side. Mm. Um. So Gina was trying to say goodbye to to Dana, and Jasmine hangs the phone up. She's such a rude bitch. She even hangs the phone up on the, on the man. And Gino tells Jasmine to be nicer to his family. And she starts to fake cry like she always does. And um, she said, um, what would you do if they hate me? Um, well, they watch the show, Jasmine. So I'm pretty sure they hate you because of the way you treat him. Why, why wouldn't they hate you? If Gino was my relative, relative and I saw the way you treated him, I would hate you too, girl. Even though Gino does... Um, um, allow you to treat him that way. I think, I think Jasmine is, is manipulative because she talk about, she says how, um, he's the reason she lost her job. Not true. Crooked. She said he's the reason she lost her job. Not true. And she making him support her because she's saying he's the reason he, she lost her job. Manipulative. And she said, I think she's lazy because she don't want to work. She don't want to get a job. She don't want to work. And I think she's a gold digger because she's bleeding his bank account dry. And there's a whole lot of crap I can say about Jasmine, but I'm not trying to have a long video. <laughs> so Gino tells her that if his family doesn't like her, he would talk to them and figure it out. She asked him if he would defend her. And he told her it depends on the situation. And I'm glad he's not lying to her. I'm glad he's letting her know the real deal. So um, she lets her tears flow in order to get his sympathy. And he tells her that um, he's in the relationship for the long haul. And that she promised to be a nicer human being. And that's the end of Jasmine and Gino. Next up is Chloe, is Cleo and Christian. So we see Cleo and her friend in a car on their way to the Airbnb to confront Christian. I think it's weird that she's bringing her friend to confront Kristen. The friend got to do with anything, you know? Um, it's not like she's going to a brawl and she needs backup. <laughs> I'm sure, uh, um, what's his name? Kristen don't even know how to, um, throw a punch. <laughs> anyway, they get to the Airbnb and they all sit down to talk. And Chloe said to him that you lied to the producer and said that we didn't have sex when we did. And Kristen said... After I lied to the producer, I sent you a message to let you, you know, um, to tell you that I lied so that we can get our stories together. And, um, Cleo said, I told you I would not, I, she said, I told you I would tell the truth. What made you think I would lie? I would change my mind and lie. Kristen, Kristen is stupid. Or he thinks Cleo is stupid. He said, why would I have sex with you and then lie about it? Both him and the friend said, you did. <laughs> Kristen said, well, in my mind, I didn't. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> then Kristen tell the, uh, um, tells him that he feels like he's being ganged up on, and he told the friend to leave the room so he can talk to Cleo. Kristen is an asshole. He's not just an asshole. He's a confusing asshole. Because I like to analyze people and put them in a category. But with Kristen, I can't. And it's frustrating to me. I don't know. Anyway, Kristen is pissed. He's pissed that when he called Cleo to tell her not to tell the truth about them sleeping together, 
she had said to him that he's gaslighting her, he's manipulating her, and he's a psychopath. And he does not want to be in a relationship with somebody who calls him names. So he flips the script, the, the switch on her, and um, she ends up apologizing to him. Alexa, what's a psychopath? Okay, here's WebMD. A psychopath has a poor inner sense of right and wrong. They don't have a conscience that causes them to feel bad. They don't fear the consequences of their actions, and they are unable to see how others feel. Most use manipulation, not violence, to get what they want. Doctors use the term antisocial personality disorder to describe a psychopath. Is there something else you'd like to know? No. Hey, I'm antisocial. Thank I'm not a psychopath. WebMD. Goodbye. Anyway, I'm antisocial. And he's not antisocial. I'm not a psychopath. But the majority of the description describes um, Christian to a T. Okay? So anyway, she apologizes again. And then they hugged it out. Then she walked her friend outside. And her friend basically told her to dump that biatch. And I agree 100%. Because Chloe is in for nothing but misery messing around with him. Okay, next up, Tyre and Carmilla. So Tyre is in the restaurant waiting to meet the real Carmilla. And he can't sit still. Chill out, uh, Tyre. This is just one person. You're just meeting one damn person. Nothing crazy is about to go down, okay? So somebody shows up. I don't think it's Carmela because she don't look to be. That don't look like the, the person in the picture. So I don't know who this was. <laughs> um. So then she puts her glasses on and looks at him, and then she takes her glasses off. I don't know what that was all about. I guess she's blind. In the meantime, Tyre is blushing and he's tongue tied and he's acting like a teenager on his first date. And he's starstruck. He's, ask, he's acting like he's meeting his very favorite star for the first time. But anyway, he finally got his act together and tells her about the fake Carmilla. The real Carmilla sips her wine and just listens to his entire story without saying a word. Then he asks her if she knew Kristen from Barbados or if she had anything to do with catfishing him. The real Carmilla told him, nope, she had nothing to do with that. Um, but Tyre believes her, and now he's happy. Uh, the producer at one point asks her, why did she meet up with Tyre? And um, she said he looked like a good guy, and she felt sorry for him. She said, plus, she gets a chance to be on TV. She didn't say that, but plus, she got a chance to be on TV, okay? She tells him to be positive and to, tr to keep trying to find love. So then he gives her the candle that he had bought for her, and then he asks her if she's seen somebody, if she's seen anyone. And yes, she's seen someone. She's an escort. She's seen a whole bunch of people. <laughs> she told him, no, she's not in a relationship right now, and she really doesn't want to be in a relationship right now. He asks her if she wants to keep in touch and be friends. <laughs> Tyre is shooting his shot. He told her um, she can come to California and he can show her around. He said they can hang out. They can travel some places together. And um, he can come back to Denver to see her. Poor Carmilla. Carmilla is going to have to ghost this man to get in order to get rid of him. Then he walks her to her Uber and gives her a hug. And that's the end of Kristen and Carmilla. Next up is Dempsey and Staller. Statler. Statler. So Dempsey comes home and Statler has set up a scavenger hunt for her. Dempsey did the scavenger hunt and she liked it, but she's hoping that Statler will not propose to her because it's too soon. So Statler makes a fire and stands in the dark with roses and wait for Dempsey to show up. Dempsey shows up, they sit down with drinks and Statler downs her drink to have her nervous. I guess she needs that liquid courage in order to ask um, Dempsey if she can move in. So Dempsey opens up her gift, and Styler um, got her some cute earrings. I like those earrings. Um, they made s'mores, messy s'mores. The s'mores were messy. I've never made s'mores. Mm. Um, then they then tell each other that they love each other. Then Styler tells Dempsey that when she returns to the States, her lease will be up, and she does not plan on renewing it. She said since they both love each other, she wants to move to England and live with her. Dempsey suggests that she move to England, but she get her own place. Because um, she doesn't want to rush things. 
Speller does not understand why she can't move in with Dempsey. Dempsey. Dempsey told her that she doesn't know her well enough yet. Dempsey told her, I just found out that you're a cheater. Then Dempsey asked her, and what's going on with you and your ex? Um, when was the last time you spoke to your ex? And Starla said, I spoke to my ex a month ago. Dempsey said, why did you speak to her a month ago? Why were you talking to her? And Starla said, well, I told her I was coming to England to, um, to meet my girlfriend. And she wanted to come to the airport and pick me up. Then she wanted us to go to a hotel. And, um, she wanted to go to a hotel and, um, what she say? She wanted to go to a hotel and do what? <laughs> oh, and have closure. Is that what they're calling it now? And have closure. And Dempsey feels hoodwinked. Dempsey dump Styler, okay? And Styler, you need to go find your ex-girlfriend and move in with her. Last but not least, we have David and Sheila. So it looked like they are at a uh, at the restaurant um at David Hotel, David's Hotel. And the interpreter joins them, and they talk about um, how Sheila is feeling after the funeral, her mom's funeral. And Sheila said it was traumatic the way her mother died, and then she started to cry. Then they leave to go to Sheila's house to meet up with the contractor because Sheila wants to fix her house. And she needs David to pay for it. In the car on the way to the house, Sheila asks Amy, the interpreter, if um how much David can afford to pay for the construction. Sheila said Sheila said she doesn't know how much money David has. She wants to know how much he earns totally. Because he she knows he works for a casino and a supermarket, so she wants to know what's the total um income that he has. David has two jobs. How many jobs does Sheila have? Hmm? David said he earns $800 per week. Sheila asks Amy if that's a lot. Amy tells her that $800 will get her a condo. <laughs> In his confessional, David said Sheila thinks I'm rich. But he said he's not rich. But he does love her, so he wants to help her. They get to the house and meet the, con the con contractor, Jupiter. And the first thing Jupiter asks is, where is David from? I wonder if David wants to know where David from is from so that he can jack up the cost of the construction. Because everybody think Americans are rich. And it's not only that Sheila's um, house needs to be repaired. She needs to clean her house. They got shit all over the place. All shit thrown down everywhere. There's clothes there. There's boxes. There's cardboard boxes. There's plastic bags. Shit all over the place. Anyway, it would cost $1,725.15 to do the repairs, plus labor. If David pays an installment, he should be able to, you know, to pay it, to help her out. Or he can use the money that he gets from TLC, right? But David does, he doesn't want to um, come, off, come up off the money. He says he wants to have a discussion with about it before they, you know, decide, yes, go ahead with the work from the construction guy. So all, later on at night, all three of them to go to a sports bar. I love sports bars. So uh, they sit down at the bar and they order drinks. And there are a lot of pretty girls in this bar. And David was looking. And Sheila noticed that David was looking. Sheila, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't take your man to a bar where there's beautiful women dressed skimpy. Okay, don't do that. Take them somewhere else. <laughs> David said, um, um, he wasn't looking at the girls. He was only looking at their face. And then he says to her, to, um, what's her name? To Sheila, I love you. I was only looking at their face. Don't get mad. Okay, chill out. <laughs> so Sheila changed the topic and asked David, where is he going to get the money from to fix her house? <laughs> And David told her it's too expensive and he can't afford to pay for everything. David said, I am not rich. That's why I have two jobs and I'm still struggling. Sheila claimed that if she, she claimed that she is embarrassed to ask for his help because he has already done so much for her already. But she's but he's the one with the job. She's not the one with the job. He's the one with the job. That's what she said. The nerve. She better um ask the bartender if they're hiring. That's what she needs to do. 
I mean, I know other people in Philipp in the Philippines have have jobs. How come she don't have a job? David told her, if you find a job, you can contribute to fixing up the house. And I agree. Because what does she do all day? She can find a cleaning job. Well, no, she, first she got to clean her own house first before she can clean anybody else's house. She does not want to work. She can't even try and get a job at the hotel at the front desk, turning down beds. I mean, there got to be jobs in, in the Philippines. Other people are working, right? She said, if he can't afford to fix the house, then forget it. She wants him to pay for everything. She don't want to get a job and help. So then David asked her if she's upset. And of course she's upset. She may try to act like G like um, Jasmine. Do a Jasmine. Starts crying so that he'll feel sorry for her. Sheila asked him if he thinks that she's after his money. Yes, you're after his money. You don't even want to get a job to help yourself. What do she do all day long? She don't clean her house. She don't work. What does she do all day long? So when she said, she asked me if he thinks she's after his money, it took him a long time to respond. And then he finally responded and shook his head, no. But because he hesitated, she said, oh, he has doubts. Then she told him, I'm not after your money. But hats off to the, um, the interpreter. She, when she was doing her translating, she was translating in, in nice words because she didn't want to cause friction between them. So she was dumb, dumbing down the, the attitudes. She didn't want nobody to get offended, I guess. So Sheila basically said in her confessional that David don't um, have to... Um, David doesn't have as much money as she thought he did. And she need to find someone to take care of her and her son. And you say you're not after his money, Sheila? You are after his money. Sheila is like Jasmine. She, she doesn't want to work. She's friggin' lazy. She doesn't even clean her damn house. I just want to know what she do all damn day long. So, um, David fell for her sad face and he said he will send her money a little bit at a time. And this is the end of my review. Thank you so very much for watching. Princess on a pill here. Bye.